<laughs> Holy f that thing has got some torque. Hey, welcome back to Robot Cantina. In today's video, we'll install the Stage 1 engine that we built and dyno tested in the last episode. Next, we'll take the car out on the road and see how it performs. Our ultimate goal is to get the car to go 50 miles per hour. That's about 80 kph for the metric crowd. Now let's have some fun and see how far we can push this $99 engine. Just a quick recap. In the previous episode, we modified a stock 212cc Predator engine with a Stage 1 kit. Doing a Stage 1 mod on a Predator engine takes about 2 hours with some basic hand tools. The Stage 1 upgrade is pretty much plug and play, that's if you're building an engine for a go-kart or a minibike. Although our engine's built and dyno tested, we'll still need to do some fine tuning once the engine's in the car. In the last episode, we were able to squeeze 9.33 horsepower out of the 212cc engine. Now this weird part of the trace is because we ran the engine with a modified governor. Once the governor kicks in, the power pretty much hits a brick wall. I feel like the engine performed well on the dyno, but it might be a different story once we hit the road. Only time will tell. Okay, before we stuff the engine bay with the stage 1 motor, let's take a closer look at the torque converter clutch system we'll be using. So the Comet 44 Magnum torque converter that we're using is made for a much larger engine. Unfortunately, the crankshaft on the Predator engine isn't quite long enough, so I made up some shims to fill in the empty space. Now without the shims, you really can't tighten the clutch up against the crankshaft effectively. On the Comet 44 Magnum, you always have to have the belt in place when the engine is running. If for some reason you didn't have the belt in place and you rev the engine, the clutch will jam. Once the clutch is jammed, the only thing you can do is disassemble the clutch and put the weights back in place. This is a very strong clutch, but it is a bit finicky. Alright, well that's enough talk for now. Let's go ahead and put the engine in the car. Now this is pretty much a nuts and bolts affair, so I'll just shut up and let you watch for a minute. Because we're in uncharted territory, the car is fitted with a few thermocouples to monitor temperatures. This thermocouple fits under the spark plug and gives us a reliable point to measure cylinder head temperature. In the first video of this series, we ran the car with a box stock Predator engine. If you haven't seen that video, the link is in the description. Anyway, due to the placement of the fuel tank and exhaust system on the stock engine, we had to run the car without a hood. The stock engine ran about 220 degrees Fahrenheit or about 105 degrees Celsius. We pushed that engine pretty hard but it never really got hot. Now this engine fits under the hood without any issues, so it'll be interesting to see if it runs any hotter. The engine's also fitted with a tachometer. Now I'm using a cheaper unit that I picked up through a major online retail outlet. Seems to work okay. The installation is straightforward. The tachometer has an internal battery for a power source, and all you really need to do is wrap the sense wire around the spark lead a few times. The installation instructions indicate if the display is erratic, then wrap the wire around the spark lead a few more times. This filter allows the crankcase to breathe. I actually haven't found anything that fits real well, but this will work for now. All right, well, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There's just no way this engine's gonna rev into the danger zone when it's pushing a 1300 pound go-kart down the road. This little hack will disable the governor temporarily. Now keep in mind, disabling the governor can cause serious engine damage or personal injury. So 
So the exhaust system we dyno tested the engine with is just not going to work. Not only is it too loud, it's also pointing directly at the firewall. Now this might be fine for a go-kart or a minibike if you can stand the noise. I went ahead and fabricated a nicely fitted exhaust system, but even that was too loud. And when I added a muffler, I lost some power. Sorting out the exhaust system took well over a week. I ended up fabricating a 1 inch diameter short header and then used the slip on muffler from a sport bike. This setup took the bark out of the exhaust and I even picked up a little more power. The muffler is relatively heavy and needs to be securely mounted. I reckon now is a good time to go for a spin. Alright, let's take a look at today's test track located in the vast countryside of rural Michigan. We start off on the country road course. Now this meanders through some twisties, some ups and downs, a good workout for the whole car. Next we tackle Boot Hill. This long uphill grade will push the limits of the 212cc engine. Ground speed goes down while engine temperatures go up. Can the car reach the summit without catching fire? We'll find out. Once we reach the top of Boot Hill, the road opens up into the Badlands. That is nothing but cornfields and flat open roads. Here we put the pedal to the metal and give it all it's got. Top speed is our goal. Once we get the car sorted out on the road course, it's time to take it on the drag strip. Now street racing ain't cool, but keep in mind this car can't even go the speed limit, so it'll be fine. Okay, I just got word we're tracking the car. Let's go to the satellite. Stand by for video feed in 3, 2, 1. All right, so we're in the Badlands and I have the throttle completely floored. Engine temperature looks good and overall the car is a lot faster than it was with the stock Predator engine. I'm heading back to the garage with the results of my ride, so stand by. Some of you folks may be wondering how the clutch works on this rig. Well, very carefully. You see, once the car is in gear and the engine's wound up, there's basically no clutch. Upshifting is done by using the transmission synchronizers. Shifting by using the synchronizers is a technique that's been around for a long time, and if done correctly, it doesn't hurt the transmission. Downshifting is a little bit more tricky. To safely downshift, you need to rev match the engine and use the synchros at the same time. It takes a bit to get used to. The torque converter clutch only works when the engine's accelerating from a standstill. The converter provides almost a 2.5 to 1 ratio multiplier when it winds up. That's enough extra torque multiplication to get the car to easily take off in third gear. However, most of the time we take off in second gear. Each gear is good for about 10 miles per hour. For example, first gear will get you up to 10 miles an hour, second will get you to 20 miles an hour, third will get you to 30 miles an hour, and fourth gear will get you to 40 miles an hour. Now theoretically, fifth gear will get us to 50 miles an hour, but that remains to be seen.
Okay, let's look at some data. Over at the country road course, with all its ups and downs, we managed to go between 41 and 43 miles per hour. Boot Hill was a struggle. We started off at the base doing a brisk 41 miles an hour and ended up with the car laboring to maintain 24 at the summit. In the Badlands, the car topped off at 44 miles an hour. That's only 6 miles per hour under our goal. Now at the drag strip, we managed to do 0 to 30 in 23 seconds. You know, as slow as that is, it's 2 seconds faster than the stock Predator engine. So take a second and click on thumbs up because this engine's really trying. So overall, the results were much better than the stock Predator engine. Anyway, I think we're fighting an uphill battle at this point. Let's go back to the previous page. Right here we can see the top speed in the Badlands was a solid 44 miles an hour. Unfortunately the tachometer was a little bit sketchy, but I recall seeing the engine was pushing around 4200 RPM during that high speed run. Let's take a look at the graphic. Alright, here we can see in this calculator app where I plugged in some numbers. So at 4100 RPM the calculated speed of the car should be about 44 miles an hour. And that's pretty much right on target. Let's take a look at the dyno graph again. The arrow points to where peak horsepower was recorded. Yeah, that's right about 4200 RPM. So the problem is the engine's pretty much tapped out and the horsepower and torque are falling off right when we need it the most. It's possible we might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of this engine, but after that it's going to cost some money. If you recall, our goal is to push the car to 50 miles an hour, and right now things are not looking real good. So let's take a look at another graphic. According to this, we need the engine to make power past 4700 RPM to get the car to go 50 miles an hour, and that's going to be quite a stretch but let's see how close we can get it. I have plenty of parts in my bag of tricks, but let's try the more is better approach before we start digging into the engine. All right, so I'm proposing we bump the ignition timing up a few ticks and also bump the carburetor jet up a little bit. So the ignition timing will go from a four degree offset to a six degree offset. As for the carburetor jet, I feel like we can jump from a 0.36 to a 0.38. That's gonna be pretty much all the feel we can give it for now. Let's recap. So far we got our street legal go-kart up to 44 miles an hour and all we need to do now is to get it to go a little bit faster. Now let me translate that for folks outside of the states. That works out to 71 kilometers per hour for the metric crew and we're looking at squeezing another 9 kph out of this engine. Well I hate to say it but we need to wrap this up for today. But don't worry, we'll continue our quest in the next video. Next time on Robot Cantina. In the next video, we go ahead and make the necessary changes to the ignition timing and carburetor jet. Will this be enough to reach our goal? Tune in and find out. Hey, if you're still watching, you must have enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and click on the like button. And while you're at it, click on subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop a note in the comment section. Thanks for watching.